Hey everyone, welcome back to Williamson Ridge Outdoors. Today, uh, we are doing our final steps to get our hay accumulator hooked up to the back of our hay baler. And there's certain specifications and stuff you have to follow in order to get, get this thing to work correctly. When we hook it up to the hitch on our baler, there's a certain distance that everything has to be in order for all this stuff to work. Plus, there's a belt that you've got to hook up uh, to the chute in order for it to correctly make turns and still be able to keep the bales and stuff going up the chute. So anyways, we're going to get into that and get these final steps set up so that tomorrow we should be able to just hook to the baler and then take off out in the field and start baling hay. So our first measurement on here is actually supposed to be from the end of the bale chute to the eye of the hole on the hitch. And this is supposed to be between zero and two inches. So you've got a little bit of leeway there. I'm going to put mine right about one inch. So I'm going to have to back up the accumulator just a little bit. But I'm going to put it about an inch so it'll kind of be in the middle of what they're saying their estimated distance should be. So between zero and two inches. So I moved everything to where it was in a straight line with each other and put it on, on level ground. And now we've got to make this chute match up. So we'll just take our level and kind of run off here. As you can see, we're a long ways from being eight to nine inches there. I said eight to nine inches. What I actually meant was eight to 10 inches, but somewhere in that range will be close enough. And actually what the uh, directions say in this is for the initial adjustment, select the hole that aligns the bottom plate of the bell chamber extension to a point eight to 10 inches back from the base chute bottom edge is shown below. And I'll show you a picture of that so you can kind of get an idea of what this is actually, or the angle that this is actually supposed to be on. So what we've been doing here all this time is I'm trying to get this belt uh, measured out for the right length. And there's some things that you have to do in order to make sure that you're getting the belt cut to the right length. You're supposed to measure it basically with tension from the spring on here, measuring out at about six inches past these other rollers. It's hard to hold that there 
and kind of get your length and all that stuff all at the same time. But I think as long as we're relatively close, then it should be good. So it's saying that the tension on the spring should have this center pulley four to six inches out past the two in the back. So that's what we're shooting for. So what we're gonna do is uh, cut our belt and then put our other end on it. Just drill holes in, the, you cut the belt off, drill holes in it, and you put it on that other end after you cut it off your length. And hopefully this will work the first time and I'll get this right. I don't think that it's gonna be that big of a deal, but the only other issue here is that you're also supposed to level these this pulley assembly. You're supposed to level it so that your belt is going at a straight shot off of this roller assembly into or onto your uh, hookup here on your bell chute. Now, this one is actually not level, but we're gonna see where it's at once we hook the, uh, the belt up and see if it's pulling awkward on it and if it is then we're going to level it up from there because the the chute could actually be running downhill just a hair to the pins that are on the side of the bell chute so we're going to find that out we're going to get her length and everything cut and get it put together and then we'll check and see if this needs to be leveled out it's got some bolts in here you're just going to have to take them loose and then you can slide that whole assembly forward or back to be able to uh, level it out. So I want to make sure too that I got this cut square as I possibly could. So I've got me a little square to lay on it. I'm actually going to use that as my straight edge. What I'm doing here is actually drilling the holes in the belt itself and uh, I took the little the piece of metal that I'm going to be sandwiching together between the bolts and I laid it on there as the template to get my bolt holes and stuff exactly right and I used my straight edge and everything to square everything up and then I just drilled it out with the drill. <laughs> So this right here actually is pretty much our final step in getting ready to use this. We put the belt on, stretched it up to tension, and what I was doing there is actually leveling these rollers so that the belt has even pressure top to bottom on the rollers. What they said in the manual to do is pretty much get that belt and everything as level as possible when everything's sitting in a straight line or level with each other. And what I actually ended up having to do is actually this is tilted back just a little bit because the belt's actually running a little bit uphill to where it connects. So if I had to, uh, or if I was going to connect the belt or say the, the chute here was at a different angle and I had to connect to this top pin, then I may have to readjust this in order to keep that a steady, even tension all the way across the belt. So anyways, I'm gonna jump back in here, tighten these bolts down, pull it around a little bit and uh, just make sure there's nothing binding up or getting, you know, uh, pinched up or anything like that. And then I'd say we're ready for tomorrow to bail hay. Then I'm gonna set this thing probably out there in the field and just unhook it from the tractor. Just leave everything sitting ready to go after I rake tomorrow morning to afternoon, depending on whenever the dew burns off. Then I can just come up behind the, or come up to the baler, hook to it, start bailing some hay start pushing them in there, see if this thing works or if there's needs to be any other adjustments. One thing about it, I am so glad I did not wait until tomorrow to do this because these final little things, which yeah, it can be done faster probably, but just where I'm set up and I have to go back to the house and get tools and then come back and then back and, you know, just back and forth. Uh, it has taken me three hours to get this set up. I mean, even an hour or two hours, if I waited till tomorrow to do all this final hookup and set up and making sure that I've got my hitch mounted correctly and got my chute mounted correctly and then my belt and my spring. I'm also gonna take it out to the steepest part of the field where I'm gonna be belling and I'm gonna put it on there sideways and I'm gonna see if this thing will sit on that hill and see how, see if it's tipsy. Cause this thing is fairly tall so anyways, let's get to it and finish this job up. So 
there we have it. It seems like this thing's gonna work out good. We took it out to the far end and put it on the steepest hill out there and it seems to still be completely stable. So I'm real happy about that. The only other question now is whether it'll function 100% correctly with the, the slope on the hill. The manufacturer said that typically as long as you're not going downhill, then there's usually no problems with it. But if you go down a steep hill and it tends to level out the deck on it, then the hay may not slide down that deck because it's level. But once you turn and you start back up the hill, then the hay bale would go, providing you haven't already pushed another bale up there or whatever. So anyways, we're gonna find out. Hopefully all this will work out good tomorrow. The rain will stay away. It's supposed to be like it is today, just low humidity, just absolutely wonderful day. This will be our first time of being able to get all of our hay bailed ourselves. We should have around 500 bales, maybe a little bit more than that. Hopefully it turns out to be more than that. We'll just have to see. This hasn't been fertilized in a long time. So the yield on it is not real, you know, it's not real thick or anything, but it's, it's, it's decent. The hay that's here actually looks pretty good. Well, thanks for following along with us and this whole little journey too of putting this hay equipment together to get it ready for the, the season. You know, whenever I started into this, I thought you just buy some pieces of equipment and then you just take it out in the field. But there's a fair amount of prep work. Most people that's already been into this stuff probably won't think anything about it. But, you know, me trying to get started into this and uh, dealing with new equipment and all that kind of stuff, you know, I've had to go through and I wanted to make sure that the beller was belling to the, the bell length and all that kind of stuff that I wanted. Plus, uh, hooking the accumulator up to the beller, there was quite a bit of stuff there. And it's not, not really anything uh, major hard. It's just measuring out some, some uh, distances and stuff to make sure that your accumulator is following your beller in the correct position. With all that aside, everything's ready to go. I'm looking forward to getting into this tomorrow and hopefully getting all this hay picked up off the ground. So I appreciate it if you'd hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.